quadratic functions. We get to learn a new parent function today. Y equals X squared. Let's graph. Let's do our table of values. If X is negative three, then Y equals negative three quantity squared. We get positive nine. Go ahead and finish the table, right? If X is negative two, negative two squared, four, and so on. Let's plot those points. Okay, now we're going to connect the points. Does it look like it's gonna be line segments? No, not line segments. So make sure and get a curve in here. This should not look like the absolute value function. Does anyone know what this one's called? Yes, parabola. It's a parabola. Okay, say it, parabola. Now let's talk about pattern points. We had pattern points on our absolute value function. What are the pattern points on a parabola? Huh, okay. So I'm at the vertex, zero, zero. I go over one in both directions and up one squared. Oh, up one. Okay, back at the vertex, I go over two and up two squared. Up four. Okay, back at the vertex and I go over three and I go up three squared. Nine. There we go, the pattern points for a parabola. Over one, up one. Over two, up four. Over three, up nine. All right, what would happen if we went over four? Yep, 16, you got it. So let's go ahead and write down the pattern points. Over one, up one. Over two, up four. Over three, up nine. And now we can work with those pattern points for all of our transformations. Next, we're gonna look at f of x equals negative x squared. The nice thing is all of the transformations that we learn for absolute value function apply to all of our parent functions. So what do we do here? Identify the parent function and then state the transformations. What does the negative do? Reflect it about the horizontal or x axis. Let's look specifically at the function f of x and see what effect it has on the points. So if I were going to now find f of negative three, f of negative three, equals negative negative three squared. Okay, so negative, negative three squared is positive nine, but then I have the negative in front, so negative nine. So now if I put my f of x, the outputs here, I have negative nine. Then if I plug in negative two, that gets squared. I have four, but then the negative's in front. So sure, all of our signs are going to the opposite. So test that out if you're not quite sure but we wanna really identify what happens. The y values now are opposite sign. So let's graph the transform function. Okay, so we can see easily that our parent function has been reflected about the x-axis. Now I want you to pause for a second and look back at your graph. Does it look like you did straight segments? Does your graph look like an absolute value graph? If it does, Erase it now and get some curve into that parabola. It cannot look like a V. Take a look at G of X now. G of X equals three X squared. You should already know what's going to happen in terms of transformations. Can you write them? Go ahead and write, what does the three do to the parent function? As you check what you wrote, I want you to be very careful and aware that you needed to have that vertically stretched because it's greater than one and by a factor of Positive three, right? The factor, the dilation factor is always positive. Next, what do you think happens to our pattern? Well, if I plug in negative three to our g of x function, what would happen? Well, g of negative three is three times negative three squared. Three times negative three squared is gonna be three times nine or 27. So now our g of x, the output for g of x, we have 27. What happens with four? Well, I multiply it by three and I get 12. What happens to the one? I multiply it by three and I get three. And so you can see very easily that that three is having what effect? The y values are multiplied by three. So now think about how we can graph this. We go back to our vertex, zero, zero, and then we're going to go over one, up one. Wait a second, no, nope, because it's vertically stretched by three, so the y values are multiplied. So over one, 
up one, but one times three is three, so over one, up three. Okay, over two, normally four, but four times three is 12, so I'm gonna go over two, up 12. And then of course, if I went over three, up nine, nine times three, I'd go up 27. That's gonna go off my graph, so I'm just gonna graph the first two sets of points over. Okay, once again, that was a little tricky. Does it look like an absolute value graph? If it does, erase it now. You have to get a curve in there, okay? Wow, Miss Spirit, that was fine. Let's graph h of x equals x plus two squared minus four. That looks really familiar. So first we're gonna state the transformations. That plus two is inside with the x. So I know that's a translation left two. That minus four is outside. So that I know that's a translation down four. Now remember, inside opposite, outside same. So I could go fill in the vertex right now. Inside opposite, so negative two. Outside same, so negative four. Okay, let's go graph that vertex and use our pattern points to graph this. Did my pattern points change at all? I don't have a dilation or a reflection, so my pattern points aren't going to change. So I'm gonna start at my vertex and go over one, up one, back to my vertex, over two, up four. Okay, does your parabola look like mine? Now we have some more information we're gonna fill in, just like we did with absolute value graphs. We have the axis of symmetry, we have the minimum, maximum, and then we have the domain and range. Just like with absolute values, I can see axis of symmetries right there at x equals negative two, because that's the x coordinate in my vertex. This graph has a minimum because there's a clear floor to the graph. So when we're gonna state the minimum, we're gonna say minimum of the y value negative four at the x coordinate negative two. Now the domain, if I put a, my little stick figure on my x-axis and he starts walking across my x-axis, I'm gonna be able to see the graph all the way across the x-axis. So I can say my domain is all real numbers. And then my range, okay, if I put my little stick figure on the y-axis now, he's gonna climb up the y-axis looking left to right. When's he gonna very first see the graph? Right here at negative four and then everywhere after that. So I can say that my range is everything greater than or equal to negative four. So y is greater than or equal to negative four. Why, Miss Ryan, that's a mighty fine parabola. Oh, I mean, that's a very fine parabola. Next, we have j of x. Alrighty, I'm just thinking you don't even need me on this. Go ahead, state the transformations to the parent function and come back and check in with me if you got them all right. This is your own little pop quiz, pause. Okay, let's review the key things that you need to have in your verbal description. Remember, if, if I only read your verbal description, I should be able to write the function. So, we have identified the parent function, reflected about the horizontal or x-axis, vertically stretched by a factor of two, and that factor is always positive because the negative meant the reflection, and then translated right one unit and up three units. Good job. Now, what about the pattern points? Have those changed? Yeah, they have, because we have a reflection and we have a vertical stretch. So instead of going over one, up one, we're at the vertex, we have to go over one and then it's down because it's reflected and vertically stretched by a factor of two. So one times two is two. So I'm gonna go from the vertex over one, down two. Back to the vertex, what's that next set of points? Normally I'd go over two and up four, but it's reflected. So now I'm going to go over two, it's reflected and vertically stretched. So four times two is eight, so I would have to go down eight units. Pattern points have changed. So without a table of values, we can now graph this. Let's plot the vertex and then go through those pattern points with the transformations. Pause, try it. So once again, do you have a nice curve to that parabola? I know it can be hard sometimes. And did you think about and would you be able to identify some of those pattern points? You don't even need me for that table. So I'm gonna have you pause again and then just come back and check your answer. We're ready. I'm thinking you did really good on this. So of course we had a maximum because we had that ceiling, right? It doesn't go above that value of three and then it's below. So axis of symmetry, x equals one, domain. I went interval notation because we want you fluent in both notations. Everything's fine. 
As I look at the next example, I want to write a quadratic function. We're given the vertex and we're given a point, so it'd really be nice to have vertex form. Vertex form looks an awful lot like the absolute values vertex form for quadratics. If I look here, I still have that value of a out in front. I have my x minus h plus k. Now really, really notice that squared. That's what distinguishes this as a quadratic. So you don't want to drop that little two by accident. Really make sure you include it. Looking back at the example, it looks like we have a vertex, which means we have our h and k, and we also have a coordinate. So that means we have an extra x and y value that maybe we could use. So let's list what we know. So let's plug these values into our vertex form. I know y is 5, so I can plug 5 in. I know that x is also 5. I know that h is 2. And then I know that k is 7. So I've plugged all the values in that I know, and that's going to help me solve for my a value, because a is the only variable there. Let's simplify this equation a little bit. I have some values in my parentheses, so let's take care of those first. 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 squared plus 7. 3 squared is 9, so th a times 9, I'm just going to write that as 9a, and that'll actually prevent some errors later, so be sure. Write that as 9a. Now I'm going to start solving for a. Subtract my 7 from both sides. Whew, I got a equals negative 2 ninths, yes! Oh, but I'm not done yet. I was supposed to write a quadratic function and all I've done is found a. So now let me plug my pieces back into my generic vertex form for a quadratic. So I've got y equals a is negative 2 ninths times x minus my h value is 2 squared plus my k value is 7. There is my beautiful quadratic function in vertex form. That is F-I-N-E. Woo! All right. I think Miss Ryan did such an amazing job on that example. I don't even need to talk through this one. You do it. Come back and check if you got the correct A value, and then we'll write vertex form together. All right. We had negative 3 divided by 36, and when you reduce that, you get negative 1 twelfth. Do you have trouble with that ever? Remember, negative 336, how do we reduce? We would divide by 3 on top, divide by 3 on bottom, and that's how we got that negative 1 twelfth. Now I have my a, I have h and k. We're ready to write the function. y equals a, so negative 1 twelfth, quantity x minus h, so that's 3. Ooh, don't forget squared, and then plus k, so plus 7. Boom. It's like we're pros now, don't you think? Everything really is fun. Yeah, let's recap. To graph a quadratic, we first start at the vertex, then we go over one, up one, back to the vertex, over two, up, up four, back to the vertex, over three, up nine! Woo! Bravo! <laughs>